We talk about emerging technologies a lot. When will human-based technology have a chance to shine? Will a virtual assistant or an avatar find its niche in the field? Is this notion too far-fetched? Or will it be here sooner than you and I may ever think? The question remains, will it serve as an extension of the worker or take the place of one? Here to answer the pressing question is Masood Gassari, Assistant Professor of Construction Management at the University of Florida. Masood, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. So Masood, let's talk a little bit about some of the things you're doing on this human-centered research. What actually is human-centered computing? What does that all mean? Uh, great question. Uh, human-centered computing uh, focuses on design, development, and deployment of human computer systems while considering human needs. So humans are at the center of this type of the research. And we try to design computational artifacts to satisfy the human needs. So if I want to put it in a nutshell, human-centered computing is a kind of iterative process that you try to have humans within the whole process of designing the technology, evaluating and testing it, and at the end refining it to make sure that it would satisfy whatever the needs of the humans are. And in our case, the new uh, humans would be construction workers and professionals who are on the job side. So how does that truly impact when you're describing that for construction? What does that exactly mean when we think about it in terms of a construction job site? So uh, let me put it uh, into some examples. One of the areas that I'm uh, working on is called um, human UAV interaction, in which we uh, study how the UAVs can be, or also known as dr drones and or unmanned aerial vehicles, can be used for the construction safety applications. So what we do, we go and talk to safety managers, understand what their needs are, how the working environment that they are working at looks like, and what are the top of the tasks that they're doing, what are the decisions, and then we try to understand how uh, a UAV can satisfy those needs or requirements. Uh, for example, we know that the safety managers need to uh, like be all the time on the job side, walk around, interact with the workers, observe and make sure that all the regulations and uh, OSHA regulation is followed on the job site through the visual uh, observation of the job site that they, they have. So we thought that maybe a UAV can be a good tool uh, that can fly. It can play as a uh, role of a safety manager assistant drone that can fly on the job site and provides them with the same direct uh, observation of the job site, not only uh, from like a human perspective, but it can be like a uh, bird's eye view and can observe a better uh, view of the job site and can also go to inaccessible areas, which is unsafe for the safety manager. So, and then try to uh, understand what type of sensors such a UAV platform have in order to satisfy the needs and requirements. So as you see, the safety manager would be the core part of a research, and then we try to polish a new piece of technology or artifact, which is the UIV, to make sure it satisfies their needs and their requirements. So simply a drone is actually going to replace in some areas where the construction would go in areas that they can't go to save them from some risky areas. So you're going to shape that human-centered role around where you can put a, a robot, so to speak. A drone can be actually provide information and data in, in that area. Exactly. So uh, traditionally, the UAVs and uh, unmanned aerial systems, they have uh, been used uh, for various applications in heavy civil and transportation. They have been used for uh, traffic simulation uh, and surveillance and also bridge uh, monitoring. But in construction, they are much more new. So uh, they, have, they are being used for progress monitoring, for facade inspection, and uh, for uh, like, uh, and also the safety inspection. And the whole idea behind that, like the way that we need to look at the UAVs, that's like a point that you can have uh, on the job side, and you can uh, mount any type of sensors that you need on top of that, which in our case would be. Uh, like video cameras or uh, uh, like maybe uh, 
other type of the sensors that we might need. But like depending on the type of the task that you might need, you can uh, like equip that vehicle with different type of the sensors. So it would be a vehicle of variety type of sensors that can go anywhere that you want on the job site and provide you with uh, uh, real time data that you need uh, to make your uh, uh, decisions. Masood, let's talk a little bit about when we're thinking about the virtual humans. I know that's something that we've discussed in the past. How do you see that coming into play? So the virtual humans are, uh, okay, so virtual reality, uh, which is uh, like the, uh, the part which uh, virtual human goes as a part of the virtual reality. Virtual reality provides a framework for visualization and interaction in computer-generated environments. But usually in VR, we try to model everything like um, objects, systems, building bridges, and uh, highways. But uh, like if we go and expand it to the humans, then we will have virtual humans, that which can be in the shape of the uh, avatars or agents. So uh, what they do with they play the role of the human in such a uh, virtual environment, and uh, either it can be computer operated or it can be another human operated, but uh, within the virtual environment. So it has been mainly uh, used for educational purposes. So for uh, for example, for system evaluation and analysis, for collaboration and communication between different uh, uh, team members, and uh, so to understand and how, uh, how uh, uh, whether there is like a special temporal challenges or issues uh, or safety issues uh, within, the, within the virtual environment. So that's where the virtual human have played an important role uh, for AEC applications. So taking this a step further now, we've looked at where technology is really advancing. What about this gap that we're seeing when we think about the skilled labor force or the lack thereof that we see in the job site right now? It's really becoming very predominant. How do you see using this technology to really narrow that gap and maybe make it an educated workforce? So uh, with, uh, with uh, I believe uh, education and training would be a, a solution for preparing workforce and also the student for this new uh, technological era. Like industry and the universities should work hand in hand and not just one company or one university to make sure that we are providing uh, uh, th these new methods and the new uh, uh, gadgets and technologies uh, for the for the people who are uh, going to learn, who are going to be independent learner, uh, independent uh, researcher, uh, and uh, to understand how these new technologies can be used for uh, satisfying their needs on the uh, in the workforce. So uh, I, I believe that, like I have an example for my student that uh, whenever I have a guest speaker, I tell them, okay, uh, how many software packages or uh, 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 tools do you use in your team? And they're talking about many different tools and packages. And then I ask my student, do you think we can cover everything? And for sure we can't do that. So, But we need to make sure that through training and education, we are preparing new workforce, that they are independent thinkers, they are independent learners, that even whatever new technology that comes out, they are uh, capable of learning about it in order to uh, make sure that uh, they are competitive in, enough in the new uh, uh, technological era that we are in. Well, these are truly exciting times. Thank you so much for being with us, Masood, and sharing all these things that are happening in the innovation of tech. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me in your program.